Hello, welcome to HTML5 Tutorials, Chapter 2, HTML5 Syntax, brought to you by Anchor Technologies. My name is Harish. In this session, we are going to learn about the syntax of HTML5. So, the HTML5 language has a custom HTML syntax that is compatible with HTML4 and XHTML1 documents published on the web. In the sense, HTML5 is backward compatible. It works well with other versions of HTML. They are HTML4 and XHTML1 also. Okay, and HTML5 does not have the same syntax rules as XHTML as. Okay, XHTML it has the rules like we need to uh, use the lowercase tag names and we need to code the attributes compulsorily and we need to close all the empty elements. But HTML5 it is coming with a lot of flexibility and it would support the followings. So they are uppercase tag names, codes are optional for the attributes, attribute values are optional and closing empty elements are optional. These are the new things or the flexibility that HTML5 is giving to us. Okay. Before coding on these things let me explain you the other part that is the doc type. So as I said in my earlier session the doc type is used to uh, tell the browser, give uh, information to the browser like what version of HTML the user is using in this HTML page. That's the reason we have to specify the doc type but compared to other versions of HTML there if we need to specify the doc type it would be pretty long but coming to HTML5 specification of doc type is very simple just you need to specify this tag okay so and this syntax is case insensitive it's not that you have to pass in this manner only you can pass it in the low case also so let me show you like where we should add the document type so I should add the document type before this HTML tag so is the uh, topmost tag which is sitting before the HTML so I need to specify there like doc type HTML. So this is how you'll specify the doc type HTML. Okay, this is used to give when I run this page on the browser, it's going to give the information to the browser like user is using the HTML5 version because I've specified my doc type in this manner. Okay, that's I mean that's the advantage of using this. Now let me push this page to the browser. Currently I don't have anything to display, so let me add something called div and let me tell hello world. control s now let me push this page to the browser when I double click on this it is navigating us to the Chrome browser so here is my browser and you can observe we have got hello world okay and this is very simple we have specified the doc type so before inspecting let me go to the view page source and here you can observe we have this doc type which will give information to the browser telling like user is writing this HTML code in the HTML5 version okay and coming back to presentation and here okay let me show you the difference between like what HTML5 and how it is more flexible than other versions of HTML so uppercase tag names okay in the earlier versions of HTML okay if I need to specify the paragraph tag I need to specify in this manner itself in the lowercase p okay but in the you control this let me push this page to the browser and here it renders like this okay but in but this this is what you have to specify the tags in the low case but in HTML5 this is in the earlier versions but in HTML5 you can specify in the upper case too this is the flexibility it is going to give us. Now when I do control S, let me go back and let me refresh and still the sample data is present here. And apart from that, can I pass like f the starting tag in the uppercase and the ending tag in the lowercase and does this work? So let me go back and let me refresh. Yes, it still works fine. That is the flexibility it is going to give us. But uh, keep in mind, um, it's good if we practice to write the tags in the lowercase only and it's, it looks pretty well. Okay. And suppose if I need to have an attribute called class, okay, let me write the class name as demo. So let me write the styles to that. So it's a class I need to specify by, okay, and let me specify the color. Let me go back and let me refresh. 
you can observe the hello world is in red color why because the div class is having a div attack is having the class demo so this is how you have to specify in the earlier versions of HTML the va attribute value in the double quotes but if I remove the double quotes does is this going to work in HTML5 so let me go back and let me refresh and you can observe it still works in the sense this is the flexibility is going to give us okay it's not compulsory that I have to give the attribute value in the double quotes itself okay you can give uh, plain you can give it in a normal manner like just giving it a name okay and is it compulsory should I give the value to the attribute no it's not compulsory you can observe here I am not getting any error whether in my web page or let me check out in the inspect window it will show your if you have error it will be showing in the console right now we don't have error in the sense it's not that compulsory you have to pass a value to attribute okay and that's the meaning of this uh, that that gives you a complete uh, detail how HTML5 is flexible, and apart from that, we also saw the syntax of HTML5. That is the doc type syntax. How do you pass it? It's a case insensitive. You can pass it in the lowercase too. Okay. And coming to the character encoding, the HTML5 authors can use simple syntax to specify character encoding as follows. Okay. Uh, and the above syntax is case insensitive. If you want to specify the cassette okay then you can do that with the help of meta tag so how do I do it I'll take a meta tag okay in the meta tag I'll specify car cassette this utf iPhone 8 so this is what the new syntax like cassette utf 8 okay uh, you can specify the character encoding as follows okay, this is how you can specify the meta tag in your ed but keep in mind you're going to specify that inside the ed tag itself okay and this is how you can specify the meta tag is and coming to the next set is script tag so it's common practice to add a type attribute with the value of text JavaScript to script element as follows but HTML5 tells you like HTML5 removes the extra information required and you can use simply following syntax okay so let me show you that so till now what we have done is like we need we will be adding the script file so in the script we used to specify the type it is text slash javascript okay and apart from that we used to specify the source of the script file something like src is equal to specify the source like my java file my file dot js this is how you specify in the earlier versions of html okay in the earlier ver versions of html we used to specify like this but keep in mind okay this is how you specify but now HTML5 it removes the extra information required and you can you can use simply the following syntax just the source attribute not the type okay we can remove the extra information what we are passing to the browser so let me remove this and this works till fine it, it works fine so let me do control s so what I'll do is let me create a JavaScript file as of now and the file name is my file dot js so let me write a simple hello alert function here which brings hello world hello sample okay let me tell like hello world to control this now I'm going to give a link of this so here is my link now what I'll do is what I've done right now is I'm having a JavaScript file by name myfile.js and let me give a root so let me do control s now let me go back and let me refresh okay right now we are not getting it so let me give the absolute path give it like this you go back and let me refresh here you can observe my JavaScript function is executed hello world so what did I do is okay this is executing by having just the source and if I add the other attribute that is text sorry type does it's going to work well 
yes it's going to work well okay do control s let me go back and let me refresh and still we get hello world so what do you mean by why do we need this type so this type attribute is going to specify like what type of javascript you're going to write there are you going to write the raw javascript or some other library of javascript okay that's what the text is going to give you but as of now it's not in html5 we can just pass the source and the other things are not required in the script tag that's what it means okay and coming to the link tag okay in the link tag also so far we are writing the link as follows like rel the value and the type the value and href the value but html5 tells you like there is no no need of necessity specifying the type in the sense whether you're writing the raw css or the compiled one the sas or the less one okay and we can add it in a very simple manner so let me show you like just specify the link tag here you can give like my style dot css this is how you can write it you do control s okay and what i'll do is let me cut this and let me create a file here it is my style dot css let me paste it here now let me give a link of it so do I give the link uh, just copy this and paste it here if you do control s and you can observe here my styles right now it's written in my style dot ds so let me write here as sample I hope there is a style name yes no it's demo go back and let me refresh and this still works fine so what HTML5 tell us instead of passing this type okay in the earlier versions in HTML5 we can avoid that that's the advantage of using the HTML5 feature and coming to the last part that is HTML5 elements HTML5 elements are marked up using start tags and in tags and ta tags are delimited using angle braces, braces brackets with the tag name in between okay the difference between start tag and end tag is that later includes a slash before the tag name we all know that it's very simple okay the HTML5 tag names are case insensitive may be written in uppercase and mixed case although the most common convention is to stick with the lower case that's what I told you in my last talk like you can specify in the uppercase or lowercase or uppercase it's a combination of both uppercase and lowercase okay and that's what uh, we learned in this session like we learned some of the syntaxes newly introduced syntaxes for the HTML5 elements or the link tag or the script tag or the character encoding or the doc type specification apart from that we learned some of the things like how HTML5 is more flexible when compared to other versions of HTML so finally thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to our YouTube channel and pro training you can also like our Facebook page visiting this URL you can also follow us on Twitter for further reference refer our website we're on LinkedIn too last but not the least please don't forget to give the feedback thank you have a great day